where we might have to trim this video tomorrow. Yeah. But we are live now on YouTube and on Facebook. I've shared the YouTube link on the Facebook page for those of you who don't have. Everyone should be able to access YouTube. We're delighted to be here in Harold and Jean, Jean Quarter's house, our, our um, off-base museum centre today. And we're delighted to have Chef Michael Kiernan with us. So we're doing an interesting thing today because we're cooking bacon and cabbage, which is the traditional version of the dish that is so beloved by Irish immigrants in America, corned beef and cabbage. And we, we don't use corned beef much in Ireland. So I'm just going to make sure all this tech is working and um, readjust the camera so that we can see what uh, Michael is doing. And he's going to talk to us about the type of meat and all that. Okay. Okay. So we have here a cured pork loin. This particular loin uh, is Tommy Maloney. Harold uh, purchased this down in uh, the Bronx. You can buy this online. Um, I don't see it in supermarkets around here mm -hmm. that much. You can also make it yourself. It's not that hard. If you just take, uh, this is a shoulder cut, uh, part of the shoulder and then part of the loin. You can see this is the loin end. This is the shoulder end, it has a little more fat in it. So this piece you could cure yourself if you didn't actually have a cured pork loin. And to cure, the, uh, to cure it is very easy. It's just uh, sugar, salt, and water uh, for a couple of days. And then you take it out, you dry it off, and then you have your cured pork loin. Okay, okay so we're gonna start this first because this thing takes the longest. It takes about an hour and a half to two hours to cook this all the way through. So I'm gonna take it out of the package right now. So what I was saying uh, to Michael earlier, yeah, sorry guys, I'll turn the camera back the other way. We just had more of him in the shot. Um, so what we were saying a second ago, Michael, was this is quite a salty, um, cut and so often in Ireland people would actually soak this you know for a few hours before yeah. they uh, cook it sometimes you boil it for a little bit and throw off the first boil as we call it and then you know do it again I would say a lot of Irish people do not trim the fat <laughs> but that's up to you guys um, it's going to take a little bit off but yeah. yeah you can you can leave as much as you like okay. so there we have it mm -hmm. and that's basically all you need to do mm -hmm. and then you just take it and this is way behind me. We have a pot of yeah, yeah, that's okay. Boiling water ready. And it goes. Yeah. Like that keeps playing out. Don't watch that much So the water should be over the top. Mm -hmm. So I need to put a little bit more water in there. Yes. So this needs a, a good drop of water, as you say, you cover it. <laughs> now, I will say people in Ireland have huge pots for yeah. this, you know, so you could use a pressure cooker without putting the pressure cooker thing on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we were talking, guys, just before we came on live that, you know, this is a dish that is the simplest of dishes. People grew potatoes and cabbage outside the front door. Many people had a pig, you know, they would have bacon hanging somewhere in the house. So you can make this as fancy as you like or as absolutely plain as you like you know absolutely. when you get it in a restaurant you're going to get it there's different ways to cut the cabbage there's you know people make different sauces people at home might just serve it with a little bit of mustard you know uh, we're going to make a parsley sauce today and I will say my own family use parsley so um, a parsley sauce but you can buy those in a package you know so it's it's as simple as you like <laughs> okay so the next piece is the cabbage mm -hmm. So this is Savoy cabbage. Mm -hmm. And uh, Elizabeth, tell us what you can say. Well, so I was going to say, we do use this cabbage, but we have, I meant to Google it. We also have a kind of a flasher. I think we call it spring, spring cabbage. cabbage. Yeah. So it's a bigger head and a flat leaf, not, not pretty and clink, crinkled like this one. And it's a very dark uh, on the outside, you know. So in Ireland, most people would just tear the leaves off and stick them in. And to be honest, we do it in the same pot as the bacon. Now you would have to be, you know, the bacon would be on for the first hour because maybe it's salty. You've got to throw that out. Right. And then you would add the cabbage, you know, for the next hour. For the next hour. Um, but Michael is going to do a very fancy way, which I think is nice. <clears throat> yeah. So this is, this will take only a few minutes to cook. Yeah. It doesn't take as long. Well, and that's part of the problem, to be honest, with bacon and cabbage. I hated it as a kid because the smell. 
Right. You know, that smell of boiling cabbage, you just can't get that out of the house, you know, right, for days. Right, right. And I think a lot of people have a hang up, you know, in a way about that. So this you're going to um, tell me it was a French word again. Chiffon. Chiffonade. Yeah, chiffonade. It's and going to be really pepper. thin. Yeah. And then you'll just saute probably. Uh, well, just boil it for oh, the you'll boil. last few minutes okay. in the same pot that I'm doing the potatoes. Okay, good. You can probably hear the plow in the background, guys. Who knew there would be a snowstorm the day we wanted to cook bacon and cabbage? So then the other piece of the recipe is, of course, the potatoes. Yeah. So Elizabeth, tell us about <laughs> So, of course, in Ireland, I mean, if you had new potatoes, you might use them. But, you know, things being what they were, mm -hmm. you, you know, you would have to use produce that you. So if it's not in season, you don't have it. So a lot of people use the big old potatoes, um, mm -hmm. you know, you would. And again, some people boil them in the same pot. My nana, my grandmother and my mother do not boil them in the same pot as the bacon and cabbage. They're done separately. Okay. But uh, some people love a one pot dinner. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, these potatoes are tasty and yes. give a bit of color. You right. Know, so yeah. these are more of a creamy. These are called creamer potatoes. Mm -hmm. So they're better for boiling than, say, a russet potato. Which yeah. Is more starchy. Use that. Yeah, they look a little bit like our curry's pink, the, the pink ones, but they'd be bigger, you know, at home. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the other piece of the uh, the dish is the parsley sauce. Excellent. Okay. So for this, we're just going to chop some parsley, mm -hmm. and there are a few different variations on this. The one we're going to make is with a little bit of flour and butter, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about butter. This is oh yeah, Kerrygold Irish butter. Mm -hmm. So that is the gold standard. Absolutely, it is, yeah. And that's the one with the salt in. You yes. could do salt free if you wanted, but we don't recommend that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, so then you just don't need to adjust the salt so much at the end. But yeah. Yeah, it works fine. So, Michael, is that a roux? Basically, you're going to make a roux yes, and then add... Yes, we're going to make a small mm -hmm. roux, then we're going to add some milk. Mm -hmm. Some recipes call for chicken stock, mm -hmm. but I think milk is... Yeah, I would definitely not do chicken stock. <laughs> I'm learning a lot today, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, that's basically it. So okay. this is coming to a boil. So I'm going to walk over with the camera, if you don't mind, just to look into the pot. So you're all getting a tour of the Qualtrics house. Sorry about that. <laughs> so see that? So like it comes to a boil pretty quick. And as yeah. I said, if you knew that it was a very salty cut, you could have soaked it for an hour or two before you ever start, you know, to cook. Right. So that would be good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We'll taste it, we'll taste the water. If it's super salty, we'll switch it again. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm trying not to show the house. <laughs> but I think I totally misjudged that. So now I'm going to just put that down for a second and have a look on YouTube and Facebook to make sure there's nothing going horribly wrong. Okay, good. So, if you have any questions, so, so um, is this something you know you would make, Michael, yourself ever? Or yes, I mm -hmm. mean traditionally, I my son is uh, Sean is born on St. Patrick's Day. Oh, nice! So we always had a, a large crowd, <laughs> and we did corned beef the traditional way. Okay. Uh, with with corned beef, mm -hmm. but I think we are going to change our. Yeah, you know, I much prefer it. I, I maybe it's because we, first of all, corned beef got very expensive apparently in yeah. the last, you know, some kind of couple of months. But I do think this is a lovely dish. It's underrated, you know, yeah. for such a cheap, I guess, meat. I know I was talking to Ralph's butcher here on Lexington Avenue in Albany, and they said they have the type of meat that we would need. So tell yeah. us again what we'd ask for in an American store. So you would ask for a, a pork loin from the shoulder end. Okay. So that piece it has a little more fat in it um, than this the plain loin end. Okay. So um, the other thing that people would recognize here is Canadian bacon. Yes. So Canadian bacon is very similar to Irish bacon. Um, it's The other thing about Irish bacon too is it's either smoked or unsmoked. Yeah. So, and do we want it unsmoked for this? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, so this one is unsmoked. Mm -hmm. Some people, um, in some of the recipe books I saw, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, called for a smoked bacon. Okay. Um, so, and then the difference between this and rashers is, of course, rashers is just sliced thinly. Yeah. And then fried. Yeah. I think that's where some Americans are confused because we call bacon and cabbage like bacon but we don't mean bacon for breakfast the way you guys do what that is a rasher for us so yeah 
Right. It's or the you, same kind of meat. But... That, uh, streaky bacon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's um, bacon from the belly. Okay. Yeah. This is bacon from the back. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a different area. But I mean, just the term, you know, yes. like we don't say bacon for a rasher that you would eat at breakfast, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Or even streaky right. bacon, you know, you, you rarely kind of use that at home. Mm -hmm. But uh, as a phrase, I mean, Mm -hmm. But you don't see even that type of thin sliced bacon at all. And not really. No, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, good. So, what now? You want to cut the cabbage first, or what? Yeah, are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, cut the cabbage and uh, I'm just gonna put this back the potatoes down. going first. Okay, yeah. So, I'm going to put some water on. And Great. These potatoes won't take long, maybe 15 minutes. Yeah. So Facebook, I'm just going to, you know, if you need any questions on Facebook too, you can ask us. Um, okay. <clears throat> So now this cabbage. <laughs> oh, good. So apparently everything is fine on YouTube. We have a, a quality tester offsite. <laughs> She's assured me that everything is fine. So now look, I, Michael, your face is not going to be in the shot, but we do want to see how you cut the, cut the cabbage. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take the core out. Mm -hmm. Now, traditionally uh, for Americans, they would leave the core in and just do quarters yeah. because the core so, sort of holds it together. But it doesn't have great flavor, okay. so we're going to discard that. Hmm. And I was saying, actually, in Ireland, we do not serve it the way you guys do in the quarters. We would just take the leaves off individually and plop them in. <laughs> right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And, you know, you could cook this cabbage really like it with the sautéing or a stir-fry later on in some other dish. Yeah. You absolutely could. Yeah. It doesn't take long at all. Mm -hmm. So this is more like a Napa cabbage or... Um, you know, not not the not the, not the one for coleslaw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Things of that nature. I mean, this actually, I love this raw too. You know, yes. it's a nice, yeah, clean, thick. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, if we're getting fancy, and I'm going to admit to doing this myself, I sometimes put fennel leaves on my cabbage. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> great, yeah. Great addition to this. So we're going to add this a little bit later. So okay, yeah. Not quite ready for that. And again, this is uh, very economical and stuff. Yeah, well, and that, that is exactly the point. I think both of corned beef and cabbage and of bacon and cabbage, this was food, you know, at home, poor people ate it. As I said, a lot of people would have had it in their homestead right. or have access to it. A lot of people kept a pig. It was a joke, you know, the pig in the kitchen with the Irish. Right. Of course, most times you had to sell that, you know, to pay your rent. But you might be able to keep a portion of the meat and hang mm -hmm. it in the rafters. Mm -hmm. And then when they come here, it becomes corned beef because... You know, there's two different versions of the story. One apparently is that it was used on ship mm -hmm. in barrels because it was yes. brined and all of that. And that then when they landed in America, if there was leftovers, they would throw the barrel overboard. I don't know if I believe that. And that, you know, Irish women for five points could come down and take it out. Mm -hmm. That seems a bit sort of fanciful, but I applaud their entrepreneurship if they did. Right. Uh, but the other, the more logical one is that a lot of, you know, um, butchers in particularly New York City were Jewish and they wouldn't handle pig. Right. So it might just have more expensive or more difficult mm -hmm. to get big whereas corned beef particularly as a brined meat you know it, it kept a long time it was preserved it probably was cheap you know back in the day yes and yes. of course we know cabbage sauerkraut like so these are immigrant foods that a lot of groups of the irish and germans came in very similar numbers in the mid-19th century so there's probably a little bit of piggybacking off each other's you know <laughs> culture here that's the other uh, bit too uh, the this the shoulder picnic shoulder uh, of the pork is the cheaper piece the hands were okay. the more aristocratic oh yeah right like the christmas ham and stuff, yeah, stuff like and i see so where it's from yeah they wouldn't have been able to afford it the traditional house mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow okay so uh did you i interrupted you <laughs> no 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 uh what do you want to move on to now because uh, you're not ready for the cabbage uh, the next thing i'm going to do is the parsley sauce oh yeah perfect okay this will be good so, i know yeah we have loads of beautiful dishes Uh, 
And now we're waiting for you uh, on, on uh, what's the word? unusually quiet. <laughs> Harold Quarters, did you ever make bacon and cabbage? You want to move in over there? I think you should. I'm going to try and convince him to get into the kitchen so that at least the volume can be picked up. <laughs> he might not want to be on camera, but did you cook bacon and cabbage, Harold, ever? I've made one in my... Uh... Made, made it once. Oh yeah, do you want to come in? Will I move a chair? Or I can move the camera, hang on now. There he is. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, um, so you made it once. Yes, was it a many years ago. soaring triumph or no? <laughs> Sorry, was it what? Was it a triumph or? Yes, it was a oh, triumph. Oh, it was, okay, yes, good. of it course. Was, <laughs> it was definitely, uh, it was definitely a, tri a triumph. <laughs> Uh, the pressure's on. Uh, yeah, so, right. Yeah. Yes. Well, I don't want you know, poor Michael is trying to talk and cook. <laughs> well, and so Harold, this is your idea to do this series, you know, where we bring the tradition and culture of Irish well, cuisine. We had a wonderful conversation. And mm -hmm. yes, Several. <laughs> we decided that we were going to really do yeah. uh, to show that uh, there really truly is an Irish cuisine. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, that's I, maybe to people who are not chefs, the difference between cuisine and food you know, do you want to elaborate on that? Like that there is actually, there are native dishes, there are native kind of indigenous ingredients uh, that we use in Ireland that should be sort of preserved. Yes. Mm -hmm. Michael's um, nodding emphatically too. We have um, the, just the sheer uh, um, uh, amount of cookbooks that are mm -hmm. coming out of Ireland now mm -hmm. or in the past 20 years. Um, the rebel, it's really a, it's evolving. Irish cuisine is re are really evolving. <laughs> Um, it's definitely not a contradiction in terms any longer. No, right. And, you know, I think what's so interesting about this is we don't get enough credit, I think, in Ireland. We've been farm to table for 25, 30 years, you know, and, and I mean, if you want to go back for 200 or 300 years. But I think what happened was we often were a culture with food scarcity. And so, mm -hmm. you know, particularly the potato famine, you had a, a peasant class, at mm -hmm. least 25% mm -hmm. of the country, absolutely dependent on the potato. Um, they didn't have time or they didn't really have the resources to be innovative with their cooking, but they ate nutritious food when they could get. And like we do amazing things with seaweed and with, you know, periwinkles and cockles and mussels and all these things. Um, of course, an island, but, you know, during the Great Hunger, they couldn't they couldn't fish. They weren't allowed to fish because the landlord owned the rivers, you know, or they pawned their nets. Right. So I think Ireland is kind of misjudged in its food sometimes. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, Real science where it's become <laughs> four for the women's <laughs> first place, and uh, you know, with the cook school of uh, uh, Myrtle Out, and uh, yeah, and I think you know, it's a great reputation for spirits and distilling, but even the distilling coming on, like they're using what mm -hmm. it's, it's not just water or gin with juniper and berries and all of these other things in them um so yeah I, I think it's a good thing for ireland you know to finally use our freshness our variety and i would say you know, ireland now is a of immigration there's more people coming in for the first time in our history mm. so there's fantastic fusions going on ingredients and techniques that i think you know are new to them but and they're not afraid to experiment Exactly. Mm -hmm. So with all your parsley chopped up beautifully. Yeah. So and you're taking your spuds. Yeah, we mm -hmm. need spuds. So they're not on the boil. No, can I ask? Was this just for today? Or like, do you boil your water first and then put in the potato, or no? Um, it really doesn't matter that much with potatoes. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I think maybe it's it's pasta that it has to be boiling water and yes. then add the yeah. Okay. Potatoes not necessarily. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I don't know it, if my grandmother would agree with you, but she's not a chef. <laughs> <laughs> Although, Nana, you're an excellent cook. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the other, the other thing we're going to do in a few minutes is the parsley sauce. Okay, good, good. Yeah. So now, can I tell you? I think non cooks or non chefs are petrified of roux. Yeah, it, yeah. So tell me, what's the number? I think don't burn the roux. Is that the number one mistake? Yeah, I would start on a gentle um, yeah. setting on the stove, um, not on ten, but uh, you know, something okay. if you have an electric stove start and just let the butter melt slowly. Yeah. Then just whisk in the uh, the, the flour. Now the, the thing about a roux is that you actually do have to cook it. Yes. Um, to get the flour taste out. 
Okay. If you thicken with something else like cornstarch or things like that, you don't necessarily need to cook it that long. It just mm-hmm. needs to come to the simmer. But with the roux, you actually do have to cook it a little bit. Okay. Otherwise, it tastes flowery. Uh, right, yeah. And am I, you know, they say like equal parts butter mm-hmm. and for Is this an eyeballing thing or should we actually be measuring? Um, it's an eyeballing <laughs> thing. Oh, good. Um, so it just looks like sand, a little bit sandy. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, good. And all the butter should be incorporated. Yeah. You know who's an excellent chef at telling you how things should look? Nevin McGuire from Ireland. I don't know if you, Nevin McGuire, he's up there around Monaghan, I think. And I'm, he has a delicious dessert, chocolate mousse dessert with an orange kind of caramelized thing. And he literally tells you, like, it, when it's bubbling like this, this is not enough. It needs, you know, thousands of tiny bubbles. And I'm like, oh, okay, this I'm recognizing. Yeah. But, you know, when, when you read instructions and it says, you know, bubble, when it's bubbling, take it off. It's like, oh, how many bubbles? Three or 2,000, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the roux, yeah, the roux can be complicated because I think people mm-hmm. do tend to burn it. Yeah, they do. Yeah, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it gently. Slowly. Yeah, good, with your... Uh, expertise showing us okay so i'm I'm going to put this camera back down again and try and angle it um so we're while michael is washing and prepping that's i love to watch a chef clean as he goes they say that's a good sign of the kitchen um we have mancon megan coming on april 5th to his show is called Auron August Im, which means bread and butter. And he it's a theatrical performance. He makes a sourdough bread. Also talks about, you know, words in the Irish language, sometimes that we're maybe losing, or along with words that you lose, maybe you lose the you know story behind it or the whatever it's describing. So, you know, he in the stuff that I got advertising it, there's a word for a cow who is bereft of her calf is the English translation, I, I forget what the Irish word is, but you know, isn't that something to think, like it's not just a cow, it's a cow who was bereft of her calf. And so you have all of these very specific words, you know, what does that tell you about how people lived off the land? So I think that's a very, I'm dying for that show. Um, he's doing about 18, I think, shows across the country and we're one of them in, in Albany on April 5th. So check out our Facebook and website and you can buy tickets there, $25 for non-members and 20 for members. Um, so yeah, now, so I, I see you were heating the pot first. Well, that was just because the ring was hot or? The ring was already hot. Okay, yeah. The ring was already hot. So uh, just turning it on the back. Uh, this is our uh, quality control center here. <laughs> but I'm delighted we're doing this in a home. It's, you know, very nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does make sense. Yeah. Well, that's it. You know, we don't have a commercial kitchen, unfortunately. <laughs> so, but this is a homey, a home cooked meal. So. It is, and that's you know, as I say, that's the joy of this. Like, if you don't want to cut the cabbage oh, fancily, sure. or if you don't want a white parsley sauce, you know, you can put mustard or or a one. There's a, a brand called Chef Sauce. So mm-hmm. A lot yep. of people use that. Let that melt completely. Mm-hmm. So another thing, so the butter melts before you add the flour. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I may have been doing that wrong all the time. I see. Um, uh, maybe we're a little bit worried with the with the snow, <laughs> but we're back. <laughs> and we are still streaming, so we're good. Oh, yes, excellent. <laughs> All right, the butter. And there's the carry gold. Yeah, so we we're talking about carry gold. I believe yeah. that butter recently got nominated as the best, but obviously somebody was making a mistake there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I was butter too from the. So that's yeah. Now, okay, so you're whisking this room. I don't really want to move the camera to me. Oh yeah, okay. Can everybody see the texture and consistency there? Oh, and then there is differences with flour. So, mm-hmm. um, depending on the time of year it was made and things like that. So it's not always a great measurement. And are you, I hate to say, are you, is it plain flour or self raising? Does it matter? Maybe you only have one kind of year. So oh, yeah, all purpose. purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. So we're just going to let that cook a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
and it should get a nice nutty flavor smell. Yeah, and it goes paler than that, Michael, won't it? Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. when it's mm -hmm. fully ready. Okay, good. Yep. And I guess it, you're kind of looking for no flavor, really, you know? Right, yeah. exactly mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, um, different uh, recipes call for a roux that's cooked more, like a brown roux and okay. Cajun cooking. Oh, yeah. This we don't want any color. Okay. And now, to just complicate things, could you put like onion through that cabbage? Or, I mean, I was talking about the fennel, Your Honor, God forbid, caraway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> well, people do, I think. Do you caraway in your cabbage? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, it sure. does give it a certain something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could kind of do any, I mean, people in Ireland sometimes mm -hmm. put turnip or rutabaga, I yeah. suppose is what we would call. Uh, which I do not know how you would put that into bacon and cabbage. It's already smelly enough and earthy enough, right. you know. Yeah. And here in America, a lot of people do carrots with the yes. cat, you know. Yes, for sure. With the corned beef and cabbage. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, see so now that's a little boil. Mm -hmm. And you see a lot of I'm the gonna, proteins along. You know, yes, the scummy kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So we're gonna skim that. I always thought that was salt. <laughs> I was like, well, there's a lot. I gotta get rid of that. <laughs> so that's actually yeah, coagulated protein. Okay. And so are you going to Literally, I throw all of that out and put more cold water. I'm going to or... taste that. It's okay. How it is. If it's super salty, I will yeah. we'll rinse it. And now, this will have to be cooked well, like it can't yes. be medium rare or anything like that. No, mm -hmm. yeah, it has to be mm -hmm. um, about 155 to 160. Okay, degrees. yeah. I suppose I've cooked all day long, you know, yeah. when I was a kid. <laughs> so, um, for sure, yeah, you yeah. can cook it. Uh, Cook it, yeah, yeah, but um, it's and the Irish love overcooking, <laughs> it's more forgiving than, yeah, than most. okay, yeah. yeah. Well, this you know, a good bacon and cabbage actually, the bacon is delicious, like it kind of falls away when you cut it. I get there's right. no bone, there's no bone in yeah, this. Yeah. No, yeah, so it yeah. falls away and you can mm -hmm. kind of get stringy, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. lovely meat, yep, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so this the roux is ready. We're just mm. going to use a little milk. Okay, a little milk, excellent. So look, you know, that's important. He's got the roux off the heat, you know, just while it's made and it was nice. So it is gone a little bit paler too. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Kerrygold, when you melt it, is very, very yellow. I know, yeah. <laughs> it's all those hand-fed and massaged cows down there in Kerry. They're treated better than myself. <laughs> So when you first add the milk, it's going to get very thick. Okay. Then it'll. Oh yeah, I should show that. And I suppose the key to this is to not panic. Yes. You know, because if it does go wrong, do you just add a teensy bit more flour? Yes. You know, yeah. You could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like the the key to this, Michael, genuinely, it is cheap. Like we're not talking about you know lashings of Hennessy brandy or you know this is butter and milk and a bit of flour. That's it. You know. Unless you want to. Yeah. Oh, unless you want to, oh, yeah. And if you do add a little more milk, you can just let it reduce a little bit and then it'll, okay. it'll come to the right consistency. Now, the chicken stock would be, I don't think I would like chicken stock in this myself. I could, however, see a bit of sherry or something yes. making it delicious. I hate to keep mentioning alcohol. Chicken stock is good, says Harold. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, that's because he makes his Homemade. own chicken stock, Homemade. yeah. Well, you could drink chicken stock the way Harold makes it by itself, yeah. yeah. But I, I do think actually perno might be good because I like that licorice flavor of the oh. fennel, you know. A little bit of sherry, I think, would kick this up and off. Even white wine, maybe. Jameson never, never. And Jameson wrong. never goes wrong. But we wouldn't waste the Jameson in the cooking. <laughs> <laughs> now, as far as the consistency, um, uh, it should just coat the back of a spoon. Okay. So we, I'll show you that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can you see that? Nice. Okay. Yeah. All these little tricks that we get. Yeah. And then you just add the parsley. Okay. And so we it is literally just parsley. We didn't put in any garlic or no. onion or anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the parsley, you would rinse first, mm -hmm. dry very well. Mm -hmm. And then just... And it's regular. Uh, what do we call it? Is it the flat parsley or... Cur no, curly. Uh, this is a combination of curly and flat. Oh, a combination. Yeah, yeah. see? Mm -hmm. So... Um, okay. And that's it. And that's it. All right. Yeah, so then, even yeah. salt and pepper, a bit to taste. 
Or yes. we have enough salt, I guess, with the bacon. <laughs> I, would, I would add salt to pepper. I would okay. taste this for salt. Yeah. Check this for salt and pepper. And this may thicken up a little bit. Yeah. Just sitting here. So we can add a little more milk at the end. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea. Sometimes it gets that skin on it too if you kind of leave it. But that's okay. You can just stir that back out or pull it off if it's terrible. Yeah. So a way to prevent that skin from happening is just to put a little pat of butter on there. Oh, nice. That'll prevent the... Okay, yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah, no, that's perfect talk. So yeah, that's see, we're definitely learning. <laughs> this is why we have the chefs do it and not, you know, myself. <laughs> Although I will say, and now can I say too, this is a dinner you can put in your crock pot. Like we yes. are doing it beautifully here and, yes. and we're absolutely thrilled to do it the right way. Absolutely. But I have thrown everything into my crock pot on a slow, you know, eight hour thing because I'm gone all day. And you know, it is it, it's nice. I put the bacon on the bottom. And then the cabbage and try and squish in a few potatoes too. And yeah. um, it, it's fabulous, you know. That's when you kind of don't regulate, you can't regulate the salt as much, right. you know, because it's, yeah. So that's a small bit dangerous. But if you know, if you've used that particular cut before, you yeah. know whether, yeah. whether you need to, to do that or not. Okay. So that would work. And then you can throw your fennel seeds in at the end or your caraway seeds. <laughs> <laughs> So the other thing, of course, now look, Irish people differ on their potatoes. I personally love mashed potatoes. So we mostly peel them first and then boil them without their jackets okay. or their skin. Um, and then you just mash it with butter and salt and pepper. It's always salt and pepper. Right. Um, but sometimes, you know, you, you leave the, the, those bigger potatoes, old potatoes, we call them, in their skin. Yeah. And a lot of people eat the skin. It's very nutritious. Mm -hmm. There is more nutrition in the skin than, than the potato. Than the I know. Don't tell me that. <laughs> now I've got to go back to eating baked potatoes. <laughs> but it, tell us if you know, Michael, like this is a fairly nutritious dinner. Very like nutritious, if you don't boil yeah. the sugar out of everything, because like the cabbage is filled with iron, right? And folic cabbage acid. is filled with iron. I believe mm -hmm. vitamin C as well. A yeah. bunch of other vitamins. So yeah, cabbage is very good for you. Mm -hmm. Potatoes, of course, are great for you. Right. And yeah. people are afraid of carbs like in starch, mm -hmm. but this is a... No, I mean, I suppose yeah. now we're trying to buy everything organic just in case, you know, but yeah, yeah so it, it can be more expensive, but they're good for you, potatoes, you know. They are, they're very good for you. Yeah, yeah. and that's, then the bacon. It's the butter and the cream. That's yeah, that's the butter, yeah. And, you know, fats are essential. I will just put that on record. There's yes. essential fats. <laughs> Julia Child said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat in your diet. Yeah. And then bacon. Why does bacon have a bad reputation? Well, uh, American-style bacon mm. uh, is mostly fat. Okay. So okay. With very little meat. Uh, the Irish bacon is the other way around. Okay. It's a lot more meat and very little fat. Yeah. So Irish bacon is that. much healthier. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I suppose it wouldn't be as good as a steak. Like, is that true? Or is it just because it's not got the reputation? Um, just doesn't have the reputation. Yeah. Well, the pork is actually, so this pork loin is where a, a steak would come yeah. from. Yeah. So, so it's so a good cut of meat. Like, yeah. It is mm -hmm. good cut of meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're just, as soon as the uh, potatoes, I'm going to do the potatoes in the uh, cabbage in the same pot. Oh, yes, I love that. So, And I can I say, I love reusing the water, you know, mm -hmm. like maybe not cabbage water to oh, something else, right, but right, you right. could, you know, you could keep the potato water and boil the cabbage in the same water. Certainly. Yeah. That is You're sounding you slightly horrified. bring up a good point because <laughs> some people like to use this water, yeah. the bacon water, to cook the potato and the cabbage. Oh, there's, yeah. There's yeah. a big uh, controversy. Yeah. That. Well, and as I say, you know, we, to be honest, cook it all in the same pot anyway, you so know, so except yeah. for the potatoes. Exactly. But like you would, I will say, if we make, you know, like a lamb chop and potato and stuff, you, we keep the potato water to make the gravy. Exactly. You know, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Because it has flavor. Because it has flavor. Yeah. 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 So, um, so, Harold, I know you're not going to come on camera, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to talk uh, around you because <laughs> I'm not sure if I pick you up on sound. But this uh, culture and innovation that we're talking about like, is very important, I think, to the museum's mission because, you know, we are trying to share the traditions and heritage. And so while, um, you know, I, I think it pays great homage to our ancestors and particularly to the immigrants, because if they did come from a place of scarcity, like, isn't it wonderful that here we are in America, adapting to circumstances even if it means changing your meat or but that like everyone and his mother is going to be eating corned beef and cabbage this week you know because of poor immigrants 150 years ago and so and particularly immigrants who themselves saw very little right. and so i think it's such a beautiful yeah. tradition you know that, that we that we can yeah. kind of you know celebrate with food as opposed to with drink or you know yes. um that i think it's it's a lovely 
sign of our ancestors that you know their descendants have plenty right today mm -hmm. that's a very good thought mm. it is see the way we, we have to fill in between the chefs <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna flip this over yeah. okay good mm -hmm. oh no that's another good point you, like you will see look how different it's it gets paler i want to say as it cooks it does yeah and it goes through a um a series of changes when it's first cooking mm -hmm. the meat becomes very hard oh yes yeah and then as it cooks for longer it becomes tender again okay so it goes from tender to hard to tender right so now that's another reason why maybe like low and slow or certainly a long enough yes. time let it get tender again mm -hmm. and actually harold and i talked about this the other day when we were planning this section because I said, like, well, you got to boil the sugar out of everything. And he said, it, technically, like, as the chef, it's not boiling, it's braising. Is that, am I right? Yes, we yeah. do. <laughs> we don't boil meat. Simmering. And simmer, simmer, yeah, braising and simmering. So here we are again, you see, with the fancy talk. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to take the cabbage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the cabbage is going on top of the potatoes. Mm -hmm. My... Grandmother would not be happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's a way to do it because the bacon could be too salty and then you've ruined everything. You know, yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So and so um Michael, when you were like not that you were to research this, but you were saying there are so many new chefs and cookbooks and yeah. like were you impressed with how different oh, wow. bacon and cabbage can be when it's yes. just boiled three things you know yes yeah. yes it's astounding how something that you get in a pub would be uh, one way then mm -hmm. but then in a three-star michelin restaurant it, uh, it would be completely different yeah be just uh as and good as anything else uh, right maybe, yeah, not, yeah. Not, just, not just a farmer's food kind of yeah 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 so, and is it the same at least cut of meat that they're is. all using yeah 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 mm -hmm. it is the same kind of meat mm -hmm. they just do things a little bit differently yeah, yeah. okay yeah. have you seen anyone i mean this is probably a disgrace to ask but like could you cut the meat down smaller and cook it slightly different instead of you know boiling this big thing yes mm -hmm. I mean, um i think raising um, a big thing <laughs> yeah i would use less water oh you would in okay. that case mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. if you did it that way that would be more like a stew yeah so it would come out a little bit differently. I yeah, think, I probably wouldn't recommend that. Then, yeah, you know? I think mm -hmm. I think there's a reason why they they use these big pieces because um, it just uh, even like with corned beef as well, it just makes it so it slices nicely. Yeah, and a nice, a nice big piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, I remember, you know, as I say, as a child, I actually didn't really like bacon and cabbage. I guess this, the flavors are strong. Like cabbage is a strong, yeah, very you know, strong flavor. Yeah, yeah, and even the bacon kind. I know I liked the bacon probably, but you know, who doesn't like roast chicken, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and so bacon was maybe an acquired taste <laughs> as well because I think the cabbage put me up my house yeah but then you know i remember having the cold slices of bacon in a sandwich the next day with oh, a little bit of mustard or brown sauce yeah. chef brown sauce delicious you know so, yeah 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 this is a great meal of the second day yeah sure. yeah yeah it could be reheated and, and yeah and you could like cut up we have done it you know, cut up that leftover bacon and like toss it through with pasta you know mm -hmm. and, and things yeah 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 you can so, use this in different ways yeah sure. yeah especially i have to say especially the way you're cooking it because it hasn't been influenced by the cabbage right. so like it's just braised and simmered deliciously you know uh, right. not too salty so it's a kind you of a neutral meat another. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah oh see look how lovely that is so the cabbage actually reduces quite a bit uh, when well, it always does even when it's the big yeah, huge leaves. Looks, yeah yeah because cabbage is 90 percent water yeah imagine hmm. okay and then we will add a little bit of salt and pepper and butter to this. Oh, we will. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Now, I, because we're not seasoning it any other. Any other yeah. So. And uh, will there be water in that pot to drain out? Or, yeah, or there will a tiny bit? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Now, you, want, you, you would save a little bit of that water and put it right on, on the bottom of the pot. OK. On the bottom the of plate. the plate. Mm -hmm. Now, I see again, that's a kind of a fancy technique. So then that would prevent the meat from drying out, I sure. guess. Yeah. yeah. And maybe keep it out of it too. And then you would use a little bit of the broth from here. Yeah. Oh, mm. yeah, that would be good mm -hmm. Now, just speaking of all that, what would you pair this with? Like, is stout genuinely too heavy <laughs> you know, yeah. with bacon yeah, and cabbage? 
Yeah, I would say maybe something like her. Yeah, Harp would be good. Okay, yeah. We may or may not be sampling this later on, so I'm inquiring. <laughs> hard cider, delicious apple and bacon, of course. Yeah, fabulous. I did see some recipes. We have Magnus. Yeah, where they actually use cider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the in the bacon, yeah. So I will tell you a horrible story, and don't if my grand aunt is watching in Ireland. Hopefully, she won't catch me out that I'm talking about her. But now I've outed her. I don't think it's quite the same bacon cut that we use at Christmas. But many people in Ireland, you, it's this kind of a thing and you, mm. you would boil it a couple of times and then most people finish it in the oven. And some people boil it in Coke or cider, oh, Coca-Cola. Yeah. Okay. yeah, like not the first boil because you've got that salt content. Right. Um, and then, you know, you can kind of cover it with cider or something and put it in the oven. We mm -hmm. do we do cloves and honey, mm. um, you know, on the skin. Yeah, it's delicious. Mm. But and then that's because we do ha Christmas turkey and ham, you know, at Christmas. There is a Coca-Cola ham. Yeah, that they do here with apples that are so abundant in in Ireland. Yeah, and, uh, and pork. Yeah, and apples. And yeah, cider and pork and apples go very very, very well. Well, if I make pork chops, I just basically like saute them and then I throw in apple juice or yeah. like apple cider, but not hard cider, mm -hmm. um, and and sliced apple and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, that's a good. I'm glad I asked that question. And yeah, don't put Guinness with this. It's too heavy. Yes, I. I don't need to tell you what the cabbage does to your body as well as the Guinness, like it's too much. So cider is an excellent pairing yeah. or harp if you must. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. well, these potatoes are just about ready. Okay, good. Now that's actually, I will say, convenient that you used those smaller potatoes. They're not quite new. You know, the not tiny, new, tiny baby ones. Yeah, but they're, um, they don't take as long to boil as the other ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so lids on, that's interesting too. You know, the lid is on, the bacon the whole time it's been closed. Uh, yes. you, we did not have to throw off a boil. Am I right in that? Well, oh, we, we haven't checked. Check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have to. So I'm just, now she does her cabbage around too. I'm just going to put a, a picture in front of the um, camera. It's from the Irish pub cookbook. And look at that there. That's from Margaret Johnson. Now she seems to be pairing hers with maybe cider yeah. yeah or you know i just have to think like killians or something like that could be nice mm -hmm. too killians, yeah. mm -hmm. i wouldn't have done the cabbage like that myself but i don't own a restaurant so <laughs> nobody's interested in my opinion <laughs> and i'm just going to show you the book because it looks beautiful the irish pub cookbook and you know people really and truly if you have not been to ireland you're missing out because i don't think there's a pub that i have ever gone into in ireland like that doesn't have a delicious soup or a chowder i miss our chowders you know it's it's white and uh, a little bit of potato and celery. Oh, yeah. Mm, yes. JP Mahan has a restaurant um, in Galway, a number of restaurants, but his cookbook is also brilliant. To be honest, the, the camera is on it right now, so I'm not going to shift it, but it's called the Irish Cookbook. And that uh, he's probably one of the newest, you know, coming out of Ireland at the moment. Now, are you adding this butter going into the cabbage? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks fabulous. So that is just about ready. Okay. We have a sauce, and this, of course, will not be ready, but we have no. Mm -hmm. We'll have something else. Exactly. Yeah. So the the pork. I mean, I suppose we've been on for how long now? Forty five minutes. Or, so that pork is really our pork. That bacon is going to take another. I would say another forty five. minutes. Yeah, I would say yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you can arrange this. I mean, we're not going to have it exactly, but I do have another piece of pork. Okay. That I cooked earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, like there was no way we could keep you entertained for an hour and a half, two hours while we were cooking. <laughs> so this. Oh, no, so it's like a fancy. This is a pork roast, is it? Yeah, so yeah. it's a similar cut. Is, is the uh, pork that we're cooking here. Yes, to say, okay. Yeah. Mm. So it's the pork loin from yeah. the, from the uh, shoulder end. You can see the shoulder. So you really can just roast that meat. It looks totally different roasted. Yeah, so yeah. I brine this. Okay. And then yesterday I roasted it. Mm -hmm. So this is a slightly different way of doing it. Yeah. But. Um, I would say a very different way are, of doing yeah. it. But it's the same meat, you know, it's so yeah. Mm -hmm. And tell me, Michael, um, 
what's up on top of that now? Some kind of <laughs> herb crust. <laughs> Yeah, but so, you don't do this for baking the cabbage. <laughs> right, yeah. So this, I just put some uh, breadcrumbs, mm -hmm. a little bit of mustard, and some fresh thyme. Okay. And a is little bit of brown sugar. J.P. McMahon? Yeah, this is oh, yeah. J.P. McMahon's. No, Mahan. Oh, McMahon. Yeah, sorry. J.P. McMahon. Yeah. Um, and does he serve bacon and cabbage with that? No, that was pork loin roast. Uh, his bacon and cabbage in the book. Is that? Is similar to Oh, this. wow, yeah. yeah. Well, you see, that's what I'm talking about, the new techniques. Like, I mean, there was no oven, you know, back in the day. So yeah. they just, they did have to do it on the stovetop. He, he mm -hmm. might have boiled it. Yeah. For sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so that cabbage and potatoes are looking great. I love yeah. the way the cabbage keeps its color too, if you don't overcook it. <laughs> right. You know, I have seen cabbage water in my mother's house, God bless her, the water comes out green and the cabbage is not quite as yellow and green as you would like it to be. But yeah, that looks fabulous. I'm just going to move this so we can see you plate it. And I mean, this was this really and truly is an iconic dish at home. I I can't tell you how disappointed I was my first, you know, March season in America when it was corned beef, and you know that was very rarely eaten where I'm from in Kerry. It was a luncheon meat. It's quite fatty. You know, it it looks a little bit like bologna kind of at home you yeah. know now i will say we eat spiced beef which is obviously very similar that would be very popular in cork and things and particularly at christmas but my god that first you see um a little bit of drizzled over there to keep it moist and hot um but i was i have to say deathly disappointed the first time i tried corned beef and cabbage because i bacon and cabbage is just so iconic and comforting and even though again i did not like it as a kid so it's amazing how things grow on you so then um after this would be finished yeah and you would take it out and slice it and slice it yeah and i would add a little bit of the liquid over the top mm -hmm. and then the parsley sauce oh yeah do we finish that up? on the side yes yeah right. yeah in a kind of a gravy boat yeah, yeah. now did i not ask you something you wanted to talk about michael or no oh no, no good yeah no. I know it's difficult to concentrate when you're talking to some random. You could just slice this. Okay. Yeah, that's beautiful. So now, obviously, and I, well, I say obviously, when you roast the pork, it does go a little bit more neutral. I hate to say gray in color, yes. but like the bacon that you boil or braise is going to be very pink. Yes. Super pink. So that is um, from pickling spice oh. or what we call pink salt, mm -hmm. which is uh, sodium nitrate. Okay. So I did not use that in this particular pork, even yeah. though this is brine, but um, sodium nitrate, some people are not crazy about, but yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's not really that bad for you. But, no. yeah. Oh, I just assumed it was something to do with how you cook it because like Canadian bacon is very pink. Yeah, so yeah. that has the nitrates. The nitrates, oh yeah. yeah. And what about so the one we're boiling? This one does not have the nitrates. Oh yeah, but it will be pink. No, this will not be. Oh, it stays pink, pink in Ireland. I don't know why yeah. that is. Yeah. Well, they. Maybe there's nitrates in Ireland. There might be nitrates yeah. in there. Yeah. Bit, yeah. 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 But not much. Okay. It's yeah. It's too pink. Oh, yeah. Like the picture we put on the website, like that's exactly you know, what you would eat at home. Yes. And that this lady's picture yes. here. Like I'm just going to put this back up again to show you. Look at how pink, you know, that it does stay pink. Yes. But um, maybe it's nitrates. But this looks fabulous too. And like it is, it's a tasty dish. The parsley sauce, I think, over it really adds something. But again, yes. mustard is good. Yes, Coleman's mustard. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. We use Coleman's, yeah, <laughs> not, yeah. not, not a Dijon or a grainy, you know, kind of one. Although there's all these fancy ones now from Ireland too, that lake shore grainy kind of stuff. I think Doreen Allen, the Bellingham New people might make a mustard. Actually, their relish would be nice on this. It's just different, you know. So how fancy does that look? It's delicious, yeah. yeah. And you can put a little bit of the liquid over the top, mm -hmm. if you like. And now, I, if you do drizzle that liquid as you have done on the bottom, it's just enough to keep it warm, really. It's yes. not enough to like recook yeah. it or, or limp it, you know, limp it up. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. A little bit of that. Okay, fabulous. And then and would then you we'll mind just, showing us, yeah, your sauce? Yes, so I'm mm -hmm. gonna reheat this a little bit. Okay. Bit. 
And so I've been noticing on some of the food blogs and other, you know, American pub kind of foods, people are doing amazing, um, like, you know, little Reuben type sliders or dip with, you know, there are other ways of incorporating bacon and cabbage. If you didn't want the full dinner, that you could do a kind of a, a right. parsley sauce dip thing with bits of bacon maybe in it or, you know. Sure. Or I, I mean, potato and bacon and cheese puffs, you know, there, there's ways to do it. Uh, as a snack food you know too yeah like a deconstructed yeah ah, exactly yeah. yeah yeah um so no this does all look fabulous oh yeah so you've just thinned out the room there with some of the potato water that's yeah. good mm -hmm. well you know i should have monitored for comments there which i see <gasps> Oh, there's a hundred questions on YouTube when we haven't been monitoring it. Um, can they call in? They can. They can type in. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I don't think there's any questions. We actually, I'm not sure if the comments are able, but there's there are people watching on YouTube. So people on YouTube, I hope you're happy with our things going and um you know we'll we uh, we just lost we will add this to our website so don't worry about that we haven't lost contact here i, th I don't think we've lost contact here my web my internet is spotty but anyway we will put this on the website and on youtube uh, the facebook page again and now there's the, uh, yeah, into the gravy boat, lovely. So that parsley sauce is perfect. Yes. Because mm. you don't want it too thick. Not too thick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. In there. Beautiful. Yeah. And like that's, you know, again, kind of plain and wholesome. We didn't add, you know, right. alcohol or garlic or anything to a kind of adulterate it. So this is going to taste quite clean. You know, and, and natural. Mm -hmm. Clean flavors, natural flavors. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I think that we're almost at an end. Um, thank you, Harold and Jean, for being our hosts um, and our, our mobile studio. <laughs> and uh, I'll come around just so I can sign off. I think we're back. I hope we're back. Um, you know, thank you to everybody for tuning in. Yes. Thank you to you for cooking. I'm really happy. And Banak the Law Fail of Podrick, which means happy St. Patrick's Day. And you know, enjoy parade day on the 12th. We hope the rain won't be too bad. And you know, try, try making bacon cabbage. It's easy. You can't really go easy. wrong, just boil it, <laughs> braise it. <laughs> and you know, do so in honor of your ancestors and maybe give the corn beef a break this year. <laughs> Michael, Michael will be back to do more. And Michael will be back to do more. He's being strong armed by Harold. But we're delighted to have him. Thank you for judging at the soda the other no, day. Yeah, so enjoy you. dinner, everyone. Um, we don't have a bon appetit in Irish, but you know, ehama, which means eat well. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. Thank you. So good. Enjoy your St. Patrick's. Oh, and I'm just going to give one last look at how beautiful this is. Mm. Wouldn't our ancestors have been delighted with that? No. So cheers.